My name is Rocky Martin. I lead analytics that's centered around the brands and suppliers at Drizzly. Um, and in the past year, we've adopted Looker, had a fantastic experience with it, and we'll walk through how we've been using it for embedded dashboards and building a data product. Um, Seth, you want to go ahead? Sure. So I'm Seth Rosen. I work at HashPath. We are a Looker consulting partner, and really where we focus is helping companies launch these customer-facing data products, so leveraging the Looker platform to go to market and actually build a product. Um, so really excited to share what, what we did with Rocky and team and, and how it came up. Awesome. So for anyone not familiar with Drizzly, we are the largest alcohol e-commerce marketplace in North America. We're in about two-thirds of the states in the U.S. where it's legal to operate under alcohol delivery. Um, and we serve three customers. You have your consumer ordering alcohol. You have the retailer fulfilling that delivery. And the customer that I support that this presentation will focus on are the brands and suppliers who bring that alcohol to the liquor store. Um, and they're interested in how their products perform on Drizzly. And we want to make sure that we can supply them with that information so they can make informed decisions. You know, one of the one of the really interesting things about Drizzly and about what what the company has is that there's all this activity around consumer buying, ordering over a mobile app, ordering from a retailer that previously would have been siloed in a local retailer point of sale system, right? The brands generally wouldn't have access to this rich data set. And one of the exciting things about this project is all of the data that that Drizzly is accumulating based on buyer purchases, consumer behavior. Uh, order frequency, all of that stuff is now actually available to brands, whereas previously they'd really only know what their distributors are buying from them. They really get to see consumer behavior. And so there's a whole bunch of value that exists because of Drizzly's scale and because of their model that has been really exciting to productize. Yeah, so I would say, you know, productizing is the word that you're going to hear throughout this presentation. That is really exactly what we were able to do. Um, Having insight into you know every retailer that's in the Drizzly network, which is over 4,000 at this point, I think reaching 5,000 soon, um, we create a data experience for the brands to really understand what my product is doing on Drizzly, how it's engaging in the alcohol e-commerce marketplace. Um, this can be anything from pushing sponsored products on the site, pushing marketing to the site, and wanting to know how it performs. Um, wanting to know, you know, what what's my buyer like for these products, and that's something they might not have had much insight into before. And we turned this into a, you know, a new revenue stream. We'd done a little bit with this in previous years, but now it's much more uh, kind of concrete and a part of the go forward plan. Right. And just one thing I'd add here is that uh, this is almost like a separate product at Drizzly. The the one one of the it's almost like a new interface versus um, you know including it in a existing product. It's a whole new revenue stream, almost like a new persona. Drizzly's been doing a lot of stuff around this, but this particular analytics product really is a new thing where new users are now logging into, which was um, kind of how we we've, we've built this as a standalone analytics product. Awesome. So this will kind of lay out uh, what we're going to talk through with the rest of this presentation. But what Drizzly really wanted to be able to say is that not only do we have this product, but we can put a tiered pricing strategy around it so that our wide variety of customers of this data, from regional brands to multinational holding companies, can access the same platform and get the right kind of data product partnership that makes sense for them. One of the reasons that we're doing this through Looker is because we're already using Looker for our internal analytics and setting up all of those processes. And so if we can leverage that for our customer-facing insights at the same time, that just makes sense, and it's going to be a much more efficient way to do it. Lastly, one of the reasons that we you know, focus on this kind of avenue for it is so we're not reinventing the wheel, right? We are able to uh, make sure that just the insights are going out in a way that makes sense. It can look like a Drizzly product and match the Drizzly brand. And once that's live, you know, like people were mentioning in previous um, presentations, you try it out, you can quickly push new content to it, and if it's not exactly what your customer needs, you try something new, and you eventually meet that need. Um, and those are all the things that we've been able to accomplish with the combination of Looker and Hashbath. Awesome, and I think the other thing that, that's really great about these goals is it's really something that Rocky's team fully owns, right? There's there's involvement from other parts of the company, but it wasn't this huge product development effort um, to kind of go to market with this. It was something that 
the analytics team and then partnership with with folks on the business side to be able to actually go to market with this because these were these were the goals. Great. So we'll start out with talking about, you know, why a tiered pricing strategy? Um, how does this align to the go to market? So when we're thinking through, you know, pitching to um, suppliers, we need to make sure that we're fitting the right need. So we've got some things on the, the highest end for our longstanding partners. These are, again, your anheuser Bushes, your Diageos of the world who have the scale um, and need that insight across a ton of facets. But at the same time, we do work with regional brands that might serve in one state um, that might have only been around for a couple of years, and there's no reason that we shouldn't be using this same platform to meet their needs, right? And so just offering different content at a different price level allows us to do that. Perfect. Yeah, and so I'll, I'll go into a little bit of how we think about this um, with some of the details up here on screen. So. Most of our customers are going to be interested in you know these kind of same four areas, right? So, sales reporting, um, their product distribution, and and where you know their actual alcohol is being sold, what their competitors are up to, and then you know what the Drizzly platform is up to. What are those trends and things like that? And as they move up in the tier in a SaaS tier like fashion, they're going to get more detail. They're going to get more depth. Um, and they're going to be able to, you know, really understand the Drizzly platform at a deeper level, even outside of their own brands, right? An important piece of this, too, is that we've really limited the amount of kind of custom and ad hoc work that's going to be happening. Um, you, know, you can see at the bottom left there, you know, bespoke data and visualizations, we have segmented off to just the highest tier, and even at that, considering it kind of a special engagement on its own. We really want to focus on the product first and kind of the needs of individual partners in the scope of the product as opposed to in isolation. I think I think just to, to kind of reiterate that, one of the things that was incredibly powerful here uh, with Drizzly's approach was that it truly was, you know, productized in the sense nothing was custom, right? As Rocky said, so many times when um, we work with other uh, looker customers, there's often a lot of custom reporting. And sometimes that is necessary and you need to do it. But what Drizzly was able to do is kind of take the full inventory of potential reports and insights that customers may want and then tier them into different different uh, product buckets. And so that really allows new customers to come on and have it just work and scale without you know, custom configurations. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit about that uh, in a little bit, but it, but it really allows new customers to come on and pick the right package that works for them without having to go back to the drawing board and launch a new dashboard or do some kind of custom insights. Exactly. Um, and that speed to getting someone up and running has been a huge advantage for us compared to, you know, what we'd have to do in an old agreement where it'd be a bunch of individual custom pieces and getting those shared out. So I'll talk a little bit about you know, how we're able to leverage all the work that went into our internal analytics product at Drizzly um, that folks from marketing, account management, retail sales are all going to leverage. We essentially then have an external looker insights project. Um, and we use a remote dependency to make sure all the code that we put in one, we can bring over to the other. We're not duplicating, we're not repeating ourselves a whole lot with the LookML layer. And we extend those data models. And then we're going to pass through you know, the right parameters, the right restrictions, so that customers are seeing only the exact things that they should see, only the features that they should have access to. And we embed those dashboards into our customer insights portal. And that's something that we partnered with HashPath to build. Um, and we're able to you know, flow through all of this data modeling work and dashboard building work that we'd already done, many of these things internally viewable, uh, to make it externally viewable in the right context. Yeah, yeah that's a perfect summary. The, the work that had already been done by the Drizzly data team and the internal Looker project was the foundation for all of the customer-facing analytics. So rather than going back to the drawing board and recreating that or you know, building some custom app that didn't use Looker, we were able to leverage all the LookML that was written, extend it, like like Rocky said, and be able to uh, add a security layer, uh, 
you know, change change a few things that are only relevant for customer facing analytics, um, and then take that and build it into this portal. And so, if you do those those couple of things, it went really really fast, and that's how I think Drizzly was able to kind of really launch this in in uh, in a short amount of time. Totally. I think we've only been live on Looker since the summer of last year. You know, we were able to get this up and running um, towards the end of last year, and it's it's all gone very quickly when you think of an integration and a change of that scale. And so what we were, you know, really looking to, to leverage with a partner outside of Drizzly was all of these boxes that you're going to see on the screen here. You know, we were moving the Drizzly app, Drizzly website through a huge period of scaling during COVID. Um, and we didn't want to have to reassign engineers to this part of the project if that was going to directly take away from, you know, building out additional features in the core user experience, core retailer experience. And so focusing on the data um, and not as much on the infrastructure and things like that was very important for us to get this off the ground, really be an analytics first project and be very resource efficient with, you know, constrained engineering time. And I think I think one of the things that's exciting about the entire Looker, Looker ecosystem is that there's all sorts of things like this out there to make the stuff that you shouldn't have to worry about easier, right? And and the the real value in the product that Drizzly was creating was the data and the insights, and not the stuff that every ha app has to do. The previous presentation um, did a great job, kind of outlining the possibilities and the platform to build all sorts of custom stuff, um, and that that is always possible, and you can always go and and fully build a a custom application. Uh, but one of the things that we have done as a looker partner is be able to make some of these things reusable because you know every app needs authentication every app needs some navigation and so being able to provide that value add on top of uh the data is is um one option for folks if they're trying to move faster yeah. um and then yeah, yeah. Right. Cool. So, so this is just an illustration of kind of what we call at Hashpath white label data. It does exactly what it sounds like. It allows you to take the Looker platform, hook into the APIs, pull in your Looker embeds, and then this platform essentially does the stuff on the previous side. It it provides the the level of branding and navigation, the user um, permissions and roles, and then you can also write custom code within it. So if there's specific custom features that are needed, you can add them. And it's really a starting point for a powered by Looker application. You know, oftentimes uh, customers are just embedding Looker in an existing application. And if that's the case, this isn't really relevant, but it was perfect for Drizzly because again, this was a somewhat new standalone product where, where a new set of users were logging into. Um, and so that's really why uh, kind of spinning up a new app, so to speak, was the right decision uh, in this particular case. And we were able to, you know, not only spin up that app, but set up the business logic around that app in a very easy fashion. Um, and going forward, if we ever want to change up what this product offering is, what levels of detail get shared with who, um, we can do that in a very, you know, version controlled, code driven manner, which a lot of other, you know, platforms and products, you'd have to spend a ton of time to change exactly who is seeing what with every product detail. So um, white label data lets us directly translate that. If we want this dashboard and this page content to be shown for a certain tier with certain permissions, we just write a handful of lines of code and we can push it live. Um, it's that easy. It's been really, really helpful for us in the development process. Cool. And then just, you know, whether whether you're using a, a, a product like this or, or building something on your own, the notion that you can kind of have these packages and then associate those with user personas and roles to make it easy to say, okay, I'm now onboarding someone in silver. They are this particular customer ID and making sure that the underlying looker permissions and access filters and everything you need to do to make everything work under the hood works. And so it's easy to onboard new customers. You've already defined um, how you've productized. Now you've associated a user or a company with those particular attributes. All of that flows through down to Looker and the, the, the parent application, so to speak, um, just works because uh, everything has been defined and, and done up front. And then it's just a matter of getting your configuration and inviting the users to the right groups. Another aspect of this that we really wanted to make sure we could do is make this feel like a Drizzly product um, and a 
core aspect of the Drizzly brand, you know, is these kind of easy to use interfaces, making sure that we're being very product focused. Um, we were able to accomplish that. You know, if you're logging into our other internal tools compared to this one, it would look very similar. Um, and so this is going to feel much more, you know, like an actual application than pulling up a Google Sheet and seeing some numbers kind of pass through or getting a SFTP, you know, sent to you every day, right? This is an actual kind of interface. Um, we can go in, change the views, change the, the theming and the colors and actually make it um, very on brand. And that was that was big for us. And, and tying this all together, you know, one of the things you see here on the left, the navigation, right, that is going to change based on which user logs in, right? They might have more or less access to different pages. Um, the actual contents of the page may or may not filter depending on if they're paying for full history of data, right? There's, uh, there's other levers that you can pull that then change the user experience. And um, this totally, in my opinion, feels like the Drizzly brand and not like a BI tool, right? So there's oftentimes I think companies are choosing between, hey, are we gonna just like OEM a BI tool and have our end users log into our BI tool? Are we going to um, spin up a new app? And I think, you know, if you're thinking about building an application, this is one of the reasons to do it, right? It feels like you're logging into a SaaS application and, um, you know, things from the navigation to the top, there's a little pop-up that you can click on that tells you about the dashboard, the filters and the tabs, those actually exist outside of Looker and then are passed into the dashboard. So everything feels more like a native experience. And, and I think that's important um, when you're selling to external customers and you're selling the value, having them feel like they're logging into a real product that is uh, like a first class product in the organization is super important. And so that's why we're able to use the, you know, the look, the look ML dashboards to deliver the insights and then the actual application around it to kind of convey that um, this is a Drizzly product that is, um, you know, a, a really uh, real, it's a real thing. Yeah, and the best part about this, you know, is that we got these live in, in, you know, the past couple quarters, and we're now in the phase of, you know, now that folks are migrated over, what can we do better? Um, what pieces of the experience aren't fully delivering on what our clients need? And we're going through that continuous improvement process, you know, thinking about this in a sense of, like, product development, software lifecycle type of concepts. You know, these aren't just here's a report here and there. This is a product. If we make an improvement to this one piece, it benefits everybody. Um, and so that's been fantastic. We've been able to, you know, do this without much engineering or IT support. Um, and that's been very crucial for us during a period of huge scaling for Drizzly. This has been very empowering for our brand sales team. They can go to their you know, contacts at these brands, at these suppliers with a bunch of options, um, really make it feel like, hey, this is the right thing for you. This is going to meet your needs, align to your interests, and be able to set that up in a really easy fashion as opposed to signing the analytics team up for a whole bunch of custom work, right? And lastly, we've been able to greatly reduce the admin burden when it comes to doing contracts, when it comes to doing security audits, knowing who gets to see what where and how, that's all become much, much easier in this setup as opposed to what might happen when you have, you know, a bunch of SFTPs sending data here, there, and everywhere. Uh, consolidating this has made all of those pieces dramatically more controllable. Awesome. Awesome. And, and just to, just to cap, cap that off, I think that um, combining, like, with Looker, we were able to go fast, but now the iteration is just as fast, right? So anytime you deliver data to a customer, to internal customer or external customer, they say, well, what about this? Can I see it like this? Like they just, it always adds more questions, right? And so, you know, being able to have the, the platform to quickly iterate on the data product is it's kind of you need it to you need it to start with, right? So now uh, it's there. We can iterate, we can change, and and that becomes um, an asset to be able to uh, continually take customer feedback and change reports and insights and and modify it. 